Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, MSNBC.com's cartoonist. I'm talking to Jonathan Shapiro, who draws under the name Zapiro with a Z. He's the top cartoonist in South Africa and a very impressive guy and a buddy of mine. Nice to talk to you, Jonathan. Good to talk to you, Daryl. Great. You are uh, suffering with uh, press freedom issues in South Africa. You're being sued for millions of dollars by the president of South Africa. And uh, I wondered if you could talk to us a little bit about the issues you face. Well, it's a very strange situation in South Africa. The African National Congress, which was the, the party of Nelson Mandela and Oliver Tambo, uh, was the party and the grouping, the, the political movement that brought about the, the, the greatest freedoms that we've ever seen in South Africa. Of course, we moved from a very repressive apartheid regime, and in 1994, when South Africa became a democracy, uh, we moved towards getting a fantastic new constitution. One of the in my opinion, one of the best constitutions in the world, from what I've seen, uh, which has a lot of very progressive, quite liberal freedoms. Uh, press freedom certainly is one of the things enshrined in that, in that constitution. It came into being in 1996, and in the past decade, uh, new leaders in the ANC, some of whom were involved at that time as well, but have, have moved steadily towards curbing those very freedoms that they've helped bring about. Perhaps that's in large part because uh, your drawings are so disturbing to these <laughs> leaders. I would love to think it was that uh, I had that much influence. I, as cartoonists we actually do have uh, some, some quite a lot of influence but certainly not that much. Uh, the, the, the general trend is that Delivery has been a lot harder. Delivering services, delivering things to people on the ground has been a lot harder than, than uh, perhaps people expected. And uh, the ANC has not been as good at doing it as, as they thought they would be. And people are, there's a huge number of social protests. And at the same time, there's a new elite being er enriched, many of whom directly getting their enrichment through their ANC and other political connections. Now Zuma is, is suing you for millions of dollars for a particular cartoon. I wonder if you could tell us about yeah. that. It's, it, well, it's, it's all part of that. I think that what, what's, hap what's happened is that, that they are feeling that criticism. They are feeling the heat of criticism. So uh, Jacob Zuma, before he became president, uh, was involved in a, a rape trial. Uh, he was tried for rape. He was acquitted. But he said some very bizarre things during his trial. He sued me and an, about six or seven other different entities and, 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 and personalities in the media. He sued all of us for a, a total of 63 million rand, which is, uh, um, divide that by about uh, seven or something, and you'll get the dollars. I mean, so it's nine million or something dollars. Mm -hmm. My lawsuit for that in 2006, my, my proportion was, it was about two million US, 15 million rand which is by far the biggest part. Some of those lawsuits he's, he's had apologies for. Some of them are, are still being pursued. My one is still being pursued, but not with any great uh, energy. So we don't even think about that very much because in 2008, when he was really on the verge of becoming president, but had corruption charges hanging over his head, I did a cartoon showing how he was bullying and threatening the judiciary. It was a, it's referred to commonly as the, the, the rape of justice cartoon. It's a lady justice looking as if she's, a, she's being held down by some of his accomplices. And We'll post that along with the video. Yeah, and, and he looks very much as if he's about to rape her. One of them is saying, go for it, boss. Now that caused, I think, the equivalent of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, the Danish Prophet Muhammad kind of furore in South Africa, except nobody got killed. But they, everybody went ballistic. The cartoon appeared on front pages of newspapers, other newspapers, not even the newspaper they were originally in. It was top of the news. It, it really went bigger than I could have imagined. Now, his lawsuit is for uh, your diminishing respect for the office or respect for him? So, it, as, as with the first lawsuit, it was defamation. The first lawsuit was defamation for um, damage to his reputation. The second lawsuit, very interestingly, is now defamation and the focus is injury to his dignity and it's for 
It's for five million rand, just for that one. Um, and that, I, I, the, he sued me in 2008. I didn't hear anything for two years. I thought he would drop it because he's now president and he's won all those battles that, that he, and, you know, he had the corruption charges dropped. But strangely enough, uh, two years later, at the end of 2010, uh, I, I got, a, I got a, a summons. And then later I got another summons. And now we have um, a court date for October this year, which is shortly before the ANC, the African National Congress's national conference. And it is completely bizarre that they are willing to stir things up to that extent, bring back all those issues as to how he clearly bullied the judiciary so that they could drop the, they drop the corruption charges so that he could become president. So well, we see all over the world that uh, repressive regimes will uh, use civil lawsuits to chill the cartoonists while at the same time claiming that they have a free press. That's is exactly what is happening here. Yeah. But it hasn't chilled well, you one bit. Oh, no, no. Well, firstly, I am convinced that despite the fact that I said the pressures on our constitutional court and on, on our constitution, we still have a great constitution. We have a constitutional court that is functioning. That's the equivalent of the U.S. Supreme Court, the, the apex court of the country, and it is very. It's it, the judiciary is trying to do a good job in, in 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 the main in the main, and I do believe that we will win the court case. I also believe that there are people. We have also had intimations that they want to drop it but they want an apology or they want to drop the case. They want an apology or a, retra a retraction, which we won't give them. And they haven't offered to pay our court fees, our, our legal fees. You know, fees. in America, these, these cases never get off the ground. The fact that they can make this go on for years and charge all these legal fees and costs and hassle to you is a victory in chilling the press in itself. I, civil cases uh, in South Africa are not, uh, so I suppose, that different from civil cases in, in, in many other democracies. Uh, South Africa is a democracy with some stresses and strains on, on, on its democratic nature. Uh, but what is different is that there is there's a two-pronged attack by the ANC government on media freedom. Uh, and, and I think that my court case forms a sort of a tangential part of this attack. Well, I, I, I want to mention that you are uh, a big presence in South Africa, by far the most famous cartoonist and, and loudest cartoon voice in South Africa. So uh, it makes sense that they would have a focus on you if they're looking to chill the media in general beyond you. I'm, me amongst other people, because what they, one of the two initiatives that they're trying to bring about is a, is a, a media appeals tribunal, which would be a body not part of the press, outside of the press, uh, and they wanted it even to be to be accountable to Parliament. That would arbitrate over press matters, and you know they would would do the kinds of things that generally a press ombudsman would would do, and but would have would be able to punish the media more more than a press ombudsman would. So it's of course anathema to to press freedom. I mean that's absolutely out of the question. We will not. Uh, we in the media wouldn't tolerate that. That's Otherwise, like a censorship board. In, in in a way it would be, although. Because of the the, the participation, the, the the opposition to it by by uh, uh, civil society and by the media and by uh, opposition parties, although the opposition parties are not strong, it, it's kind of shamed them or embarrassed them into toning down the the rhetoric, and and now it, it, it's looking a little bit less draconian than it w than it was before. But I'm saying a little bit less. We still won't accept it the way that they're planning it. The other part of the two pronged attack on the media is the Protection of Information Bill. It, it, it is shortly to, be, to become a law. Uh, it, they are ramming it through all the channels of Parliament and, the, and, the, uh, and, and uh, all, everything up to the point where Jacob Zuma signs it into law. And uh, we refer to it not as the Protection of Information Bill, uh, but as the Secrecy Bill. Essentially, they're saying they want information protected, and they've got all these kind of crappy um, spin adverts out on the radio at the moment telling you how it will protect your freedoms. It will protect your, inf your own personal information from being abused by other people. But essentially what it is, is to try and stop us, the public, and us, the media, from accessing information that could show that people are acting in a corrupt manner. That's, that's the bottom line. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your famous uh, 
shower head on uh, Zuma's head uh, because I would expect that uh, you're carrying that on for all of these years is just uh, driven the guy really <laughs> angry and there's probably a, a lot that's behind the animus on this. I, I think you're right. I think that there, that there is a that, that it is a it, it is seen as a sort of provocation that I that I continue to to use this shower head. It I, it came out of a single cartoon at the end of his rape trial. I did say he was acquitted, but he had said some very strange things. The strangest of which was that although he had been head of the National AIDS Council when he was deputy president. He, he had made a very ignorant and strange statement during cross-examination. He said that he had had consensual sex with, this, with the woman who, who accused him of rape. He also acknowledged that he knew that she was HIV positive and that he didn't use a condom. Then they said, okay, so what happened after you had sex with her? And he said in, in, during cross-examination, uh, I had a shower. Uh, why did you have a shower? Uh, to lessen my chance of infection. Although he had said he wasn't particularly worried, but he thought maybe a shower would just lessen it. Now, for the head of the National AIDS Council, I mean, to be so laissez-faire about, and, uh, you know, he didn't use a condom, didn't really see the need, and the shower became a big thing, a big talking point. So I did a cartoon where a shower appeared on the top of his head, and the first cartoon was lab labeled AIDS Prevention. The next cartoon I did, I didn't have the shower on and a, a few people said to me, where's the shower, where's the shower? And I, I realized that I had something there that, that really had resonance and, and people found it funny and, and had meaning. And I then made it a, if you pardon the expression, a fixture. So you draw him every time with the shower head? I draw him every time with the shower head. There was a period when he became president, I decided just to give him a chance, I will now I'll raise the shower head. I, I decided, I, I almost had a little calibration scale that, that appeared in some of the cartoons <laughs> where the shower, uh, the shower was hovering and, and if he did something really good it would go up to sort of praiseworthy and if, it, if he did something really bad it would, it would go down to dicey or, or, or uh, whatever the next thing was, or reattach shower was the one <laughs> the worst thing. And eventually, a year, almost a year later, mm -hmm. nearly a year after he became president, he, he was involved in that double sex scandal again. Uh, he, he had three, he's been married five times, um, but he has three current wives. But outside of those marriages, the polygamous marriages, which are sanctioned under the traditional laws that have been incorporated in the Constitution, outside of those things, and completely illicitly, he was having affairs. He basically wants to get his rocks off all the time as much as possible, which is not unusual, but, you know, there's huge hypocrisy in that he talks about being a traditionalist and he has these three wives, but he had, so a couple more children just showed up uh, and you know, he'd had affairs and had children and I just couldn't leave the shower hanging around. So I, I did one cartoon where the shower was a sort of a marquee sized thing when you gave the, the <laughs> state, state of the nation address, it's like the state of the union address, and, the, and there was this giant shower back. And then I did one called baby shower where you see 20 babies all with showers sort of showering down. And after that, it was just a free for all. And the shower is just, it's become a, there's even, there's a cultural movement that is trying, that's sort of got together to try and stop me from doing the shower. It's become bigger than I could imagine. I'm told, there was an, there was an article in the recent Financial Times in, in, in South Africa, which, which said that, it, it said absolutely clearly, Jacob Zuma, commonly referred to in ANC circles as showerhead. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it's incredible. Now the, one of his greatest allies has become one of his greatest enemies. The, the, a the ANC Youth League president, Julius Malema, who just got ejected from the party for insubordination. And he is going around making this shower gesture and singing the song Shawara, whatever it is, which is a, a, a Jacob Zuma, the man with the shower, not doing anything for us. So it's, it's, it's sort of taken on a sort of a national Well, he certainly blames you for all of this. I would imagine that that's <laughs> uh, uh, a big reason why all of the, the stinking lawsuits. I, I think, it, I think there's, a, there's a big part of it, yeah. He obviously, he really, I, I've, had, I've had two actual interactions with him. I, I've never actually gone and introduced myself to him when I've been around. I don't want to do that, but I did accost him at a, at a, a press conference 
and he, I saw his eyes widen, and, and uh, when he saw who you were, yeah, and and I and talked about the lawsuit. It was the first lawsuit, not even the second one. And I asked him why he was suing me. Didn't it go against what he was saying about press freedom? He was talking about the press. It was, and then the the other time was I phoned him up on on, on radio, and he was on radio, and I, I had a little sort of argy bargy with him, also about press freedom and mm -hmm. and w and whether the lawsuits were hypocritical. And, and as president, didn't he think he should, you know, let people? He, he's the he's at the he's at the again the apex of of of, of overseeing all the, the the great institutions that the ANC's brought about. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, if the constitution says freedom of expression, and I'm not promoting the 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 killing or the uh, injury of anyone, then surely it's all within the bounds of freedom of expression but he, he ducked and dived as he tends to do as a lot of politicians tend to do but he's a he's a real good he's a past master at that well hey it's been a pleasure talking to you Zapiro and uh, uh, you're a credit to our profession I'm a big fan great thanks Daryl great talking to you